I really like that we get so many visuals in Power BI lately, and one of the new features in the November update was this small multipurse for the new card visual. I wanted to explore it, and we are going to turn this table into a small multiple with the new card visual and with a nice clean design. This will be a two part series and in this part we are going to build a small multiple and in the next part we are going to add the design to it. My name is Jolti and if you are new to the channel, I'm here to share what I learned and learn about Power BI. Lately I like to make videos about dashboard design and data visualization tricks, so if you are into Power BI tutorials and Figma tutorials, maybe there is something there for you. Feel free to look around and let's get into it. If you open the Power BI file, which you can download from the link in the description, you can see a personal finance dashboard. It shows the monthly budgeting. There are different categories, food, fixed, and budget is so to say for the remaining expenses. Below that, you can see another column chart with the non-essential costs with the categories want and junk. On the top, you can see how much money have been saved or in this case, the projected savings in this month. And next to it, you can see another column chart showing the savings over time. And then we come to this table and here we see these budget categories again and we see how much has been used so far and what is the remaining within the categories, what are the expenses we can spend. Then there are these three other categories, how much did we spend on needs, on wants and junk and you see the values also in percentages. And this is the table which we want to turn into KPI cards so we can create some hierarchies and groupings between these values. First, let's turn the table into this new card visual and we can immediately remove everything, all the measures below the remaining. We are going to add them back later and we are going to start with how much we used, how much expense did we make and how much is the remaining amount of money in our budget. Power BI already put the categories on the small multiples. This is where we need it. And then let's go to the formatting settings and look at what options do we have here. In the layout and layout, we are going to turn the arrangement into a grid. Single row is fine for us. This is for within a category. So it says that there will be a single row in one category. What we can do is to change the style to table because we don't want this gap between the cards. And then we can also go to the overflow and I'm going to change it to vertical. It changes the order later on. After that, let's go to the small multiple layout. This is where we are going to change the arrangement into a grid and it's going to be a two by two grid. Then we can remove the border and the grid lines. Then let's scroll down to the small multiple header and we are going to change the padding because now the header is sitting kind of in the middle and it's not clear where do they belong to. So on the top, the padding is going to be 16 pixel and in the bottom it's going to be zero pixel. Then we can turn off the background, then go down and open the callout values. And these are going to be the actual cards. The font din is okay. And the size is going to be 20 pixels. And we change the color to dark gray. Black is usually very strong. It's very saturated. So I prefer to use for text and for values this dark gray color. Then we can go to the label and this is the title within the card, this header here. And we are going to change instead of used, we are going to change for the used series. Here on the top we can select used and let's call it spent. After that we are going to add the details, scroll down and open the reference labels. And this is an important section. This is where we can add all these little details about the KPIs. So for example, the spent KPI, here we see the percentage and the absolute value. And I would want to know how much of that did I spend on needs, on wants and on junk expenses. Mostly I'm interested in the absolute values, but I also want to see the relative values in percentage. We can drag measures here on this data field open the budget table on the data panel and we have here a folder and all the measures we are going to use are here. So you don't have to look for them. And we are going to add this budget spent need small multiples measure. And you see the absolute value, how much of this 146 euro have been spent on needs. Then let's add also the want and finally the junk. After that, we are going to format it. Let's select the label, select the needs 
and we are going to change the title instead of the measure name let's just call it need also make it dark gray then scroll down and open the value and this is also going to be dark gray here for the display units we select none without decimal values and show blank as zero then scroll up and select the other label the want and we do the same thing at the custom title want and then the value it this time is going to be blue so they match the color with the color in this column chart and again display units none zero decimal places blanks shown as zero here we can change the color also for the title to this blue so it's more pronounced that these are the ones this color is the want then let's select the junk measure in the labels and we are going to call it junk and change the color into this orange again display units none zero decimal places and show blank as zero then if we scroll up I would also want to change the font style because in the other visuals we have the font DIN or DIN for the numbers and instead of changing it one by one we can also select all and changing it universally for all of them there are some things which can which we cannot change for example we cannot change the display unit and stuff like that here so we have to do it separately and also the colors because they have different colors then let's go back to the select label and select the need again and we are going to add more information to it so as said we want to have the absolute value which we have but we also want to have the relative value so let's add them also scroll down and here enable the detail and we can drag the spent neat percentage small multiple here going to change the font color to gray display units none value decimal place is zero and show blank as i'm going to put here a space because in the absolute value we can see if the value is zero that it's already zero and just to keep it a bit less cluttered we don't return anything if the absolute value is zero then let's go to the want small multiple and in the details we are going to add the want percentage turn it on first and then add the want percentage we are going to change it to blue and then we do the same for the junk percentage and change it to orange i'm going to do it off camera and after we are done with it scroll up and select the label all again here enable the detail label and change the font to din and then we are going to change the formatting the background and also the layout a little bit so let's scroll up and here below the reference label select the series to all so it doesn't change only for the spent but also for the remaining then let's go down and we are going to remove the background we also don't need the divider but if i remove it it kind of puts everything in the middle so i like that it's a little bit spread out but we are going to turn the transparent to 100 percent then scroll down to the layout and we are going to change the arrangement to columns so the absolute and relative values are above of each other the horizontal alignment to the left is fine and the vertical alignment let's make it to the bottom so it's spread out even a little bit more it's actually really cool how many formatting options are there it's definitely a lot to learn and since i mentioned learning i also want to mention the sponsor of this video datacamp they have over 500 data related courses and offer different skill and career tracks supported with hands-on practice exercises if you want to improve your knowledge in Power BI, they also have a comprehensive learning track called Power BI Fundamentals. This contains 6 courses and 17 hours of learning materials. It is also supported with practice exercises, so it can really help you to build the foundation of your skills. It covers topics like data preparation in Power Query, data modeling, text calculations and how to build visuals. And beyond that, you can also work on guided projects to practice the skills you learned, which are really cool because they provide the Power BI environment on the platform and they also integrate questions in it and also the guides are directed there. 
I really prefer to learn from longer contents like courses because they give an all around the knowledge and they can go much deeper than these surface level short videos on YouTube like this one. And they cover many different topics and I might also learn something I didn't even hear before. I think the Power BI Fundamentals track is a good start and then you can dive into projects or other topics. Check out the link in the description if it sounds interesting to you. We are also going to add some details to the remaining part. One thing I would like to see is the target. So how much in the budget did I want to spend maximally? Then also the forecast, like how much did I plan to spend for the remaining on the month? And then also how much I spent. I know that we have that value also here, but I want to compare it to the forecast and the target. And I don't want to jump with my eyes between these values here. So let's go back to the visualizations pane and scroll up to the top of the reference labels and select the series remaining. And now we are going to add the budget target. Then we add the expenses forecast and the expenses actuals. Then select the first label, the target label. Here change the name to custom and the text is going to be target. Then let's change it for the forecast as well. It's just going to be forecast. And the actual is going to be spent. Then in the select label, select all. And we change the color for all of them because they are all going to be simply gray. So let's change it to dark gray. Then go to value, change the font to dim. And the color is also going to be dark gray. Show blank as zero is fine. But as you see here, we can't change the display units and the decimal values for all of them at the same time. We have to do that individually. So I'm just gonna go back, select the target label again, and going to change the display units to none. Value decimal places to zero. And I'm going to do the same for forecast and spent of camera. After that, let's scroll up again to the top of the reference labels, select series all. And one thing I would like to change is the alignment. So I like that everything is left aligned because these main values are also left aligned. But here at the target and the forecast and the spent, the spacing is kind of off. So the horizontal alignment is going to be center aligned. And then we can go to the images. Now we are not going to add any image. We are going to do that in the design part. Then scroll down to the cards. And these are the format things for these areas. This is a card, this is a card, this is a card, this is a card. So for example, we can change the padding to narrow. So these values in the bottom are closer to the edges. We can remove the background. And for example, we could make the shape to rounded rectangle. But this is not working because on the very top, in the layout, we selected the table style. If you would select the card style, then it would be shown as cards. If you do that, one thing to notice is that sometimes one of the parts is being cut off. And what I noticed, it depends on the overflow. So you have to play a little bit around with it. Maybe horizontal or vertical, it's still cut off. But there is an other overflow if you go to the small multiples layout. And this one has also an overflow. So if you change this to continuous scroll, for example, I don't know if the reason for that is that the overflow style matches, but now it's not cut off anymore. But anyway, I'm going to change back the style to table because we are going to do all the design in the next part. We could do a design also with native visuals. Here's an example for that, which is fine but I really like to do the design in Figma because it's much faster and it's much more versatile. We have much more options to do good designs. And that's what we are going to use in the next video for the KPI cards.